Welcome to the next Prophecy Update. Today we're going to be covering strange miscellaneous articles. Everything from birth control microchips to genetically modified goats. Test tube hamburgers to be served this year. The world's first test tube artificial burger will be served up this October after scientists perfected the art of growing beef in a lab. By generating strips of meat from stem cells, researchers believe they can create a product that is identical to a real burger. But creating different cuts such as steaks would be more problematic because to grow thicker strips of meat would require an artificial blood supply. In October, we are going to provide proof that out of stem cells, we can make a product that looks, feels, and hopefully tastes exactly like meat. Mass producing beef, pork, chicken, and lamb in the lab could satisfy the growing global demand for meat, which is forecast to double within the next 40 years. And it will also dramatically reduce the harm that farming does to the environment. So, apparently, real cows are really dangerous. <coughs> Girls 13 are given contraceptive implants at school without their parents knowing. The procedure was carried out as part of a government initiative to drive down teenage pregnancies. It's currently unknown exactly how many youngsters have taken part in the scheme. Parents say they have been forced to inspect their child's arm for any sign of an implant. Health officials defend going into the school saying teenage pregnancy has dropped by 22% as a result. Norman Wells, director of the Trust, said, it's schemes like these that lead to boys putting even more pressure on young girls. Now they can tell their girlfriends, you don't have to worry about getting pregnant because you can simply go to the school clinic and get one of those implants. One mother whose 13-year-old daughter was given the implant claimed the school had gone ahead with the treatment without consulting her or the family doctor. She was quoted saying, to perform a minor surgical procedure on school grounds without the parents knowing is morally wrong. I cannot understand how this is allowed to happen. Luckily, I know about my daughter, but there are many other parents who are unaware that their daughter has one in her arm. Bang, you're not dead. Amazing video shows bioengineered, bulletproof human skin, reinforced with spider silk. Scientists have genetically altered goats to produce milk that is made of webs. Human skin can stop a bullet with a little help from a genetically modified goat. The skin is mixed with goat milk from goats that have been tweaked to produce the same protein found in spider silk. Woven spider silk is four times stronger than the material used in bulletproof vests. The silk is layered with bioengineered human skin that is grown in a laboratory and can withstand a direct impact from a bullet, although not one fired at full speed yet. So according to this article, they are genetically modifying living goats to produce spider silk in their milk. Now, if that's possible, imagine what types of things they're doing that they're not telling us. UN to propose planetary regulations of water and food. An environmental report issued by the Agency of the United Nations last month has some critics sounding the alarm, saying it's a call for a global government over how the Earth is managed. The scientists who wrote the report say it focuses on identifying emerging issues in the global environment and that it's not about mandating solutions. But its critics see an agenda lurking in its 60 pages, which call for a complete overhaul of how the world's food and water are created and distributed. Something the report says is urgently needed for the human race to keep feeding and hydrating itself safely. One in eight chance of a solar mega flare causing trillions of dollars in damage in the next 10 years, scientists warn. In today's electronic infused world, the consequences of such a huge magnetic force raining down on the planet could be catastrophic and may take a decade to recover from. A long-term outage would likely include, for example, disruption of transportation, 
communication, banking and financial systems, and governmental services. There is a 12% chance of a solar mega flare occurring over the next decade. Bars and stores use facial recognition technology to increase sales. Privacy advocates concerned when faces and names are matched. A decade ago in the DreamWorks movie Minority Report, Billboard spoke directly to the characters in the movie and even knew their names. In just a few weeks, a science fiction plot will become a reality as some businesses in Central Florida will know who you are when you walk through the door. Stores can now use your face to increase sales. It's not unusual to see cameras, but this new technology allows cameras not just to see what people do, but who they are and maybe much more. Shops and malls across the country are already taking this a step further. There are now billboards and kiosks that cater ads to your age and demographic. For example, if a 30-year-old woman walked into a mall, her photo would be taken. It would recognize her gender, age, and race and instantly provide ads for the appropriate products. An industry expert believes it's just a matter of time before stores not only recognize you, but track your spending habits. When you walk into a store, it might know who you are and give you details based on past purchases. Retailers would then have a face, name, and much more. It's not out of the question that 10 years from now when we walk down the street, people will be wearing camouflage, so they are not picked up on the facial recognition trackers that will be set up all over the place. Banks are using it to identify customers and prevent fraud. Hotels are using it to know when the honor program guests arrive. Bars, by the end of this year, will begin using cameras that will capture faces, age, gender, and much more with an application called SceneTap. A flesh-eating bug that you can catch on the bus or train is spreading in the UK. A strain of MRSA from the US causes large boils and is resistant to several frontline antibiotics. It survives on surfaces and can be picked up on public transport. It's a flesh-eating form of pneumonia that's easily passed between healthy people on public transport and is spreading across the UK. It was first seen in the US, but cases are now being reported in the community and not just hospitals in Britain. The deadly strain can cause large boils on the skin and can lead to fatal blood poisoning or a form of pneumonia that can eat away at lung tissue. Human brain cells created from skin. British scientists are now claiming to have made a major breakthrough after creating brain tissues from human skin. The researchers have for the first time generated crucial types of human brain cells in the laboratory by reprogramming skin cells, which they say could speed up the hunt for new treatments. They use the controversial method of embryonic stem cells obtained by the destruction of a embryo. So think of the movie The Island being brought to reality, and that's what you have. Homeschoolers can't be taught that gay sex is sinful. Under the New Education Act, homeschoolers and religious schools will be banned from disrespecting people's differences. The president of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association of Canada said the new act is clearly signaling that they are in fact planning to violate the private conversations families have in their own homes. A government that seeks this sort of control over our personal lives should be feared and opposed. LifeSite News noted that the progressive conservative government has 67 of the 83 seats. So the bill is almost certain to pass. Sex selection abortions are widespread. A former medical director of the country's largest abortion provider said it was well known that women are terminating pregnancies because of the gender of the child and that he has been asked by women to arraign the procedure for this very reason. Many women are having a scan or blood test to find out if the child is male or female, then ask for a termination without telling the doctor the real reason. Abortion outrage. Mums should be allowed to terminate newborns, says Australian academics. Killing newborn babies should be allowed if their mother wishes. Australian philosophers have argued. They say that a fetus and a newborn both lack a sense of life and aspiration. They argue that this justifies a afterbirth abortion. They say it's painless as the baby is not missing out on a life he or she cannot contemplate. A mom's right outweigh those of a newborn.
Dutch mobile euthanasian units to make house calls. A new controversial scheme called Life End will allow mobile euthanasia units to travel around the country to respond to the wishes of sick people who wish to end their lives, and has now been launched in the Netherlands. The schemes, which started on Thursday, will send teams of specially trained doctors and nurses to the homes of people. Services are being offered to Dutch citizens free of charge. How considerate of them. The euthanasia process is also known as mercy killings. The guidelines state that the person must be incurably sick, be suffering from unbearable pain, and have expressed the wish to die. Sick people or their relatives can submit their applications via telephone or email, and if the patient's request fulfills a number of strict criteria, the team is then dispatched. So basically, if you are getting tired of taking care of grandma and grandpa, you know exactly who to call. Scientists use stem cells to generate human eggs. Researchers at the MA General Hospital say they have extracted stem cells from human ovaries and made them generate egg cells. The events, if confirmed, might provide a new source of eggs for treating infertility, though scientists say it's far too early to tell if the work holds such promise. Even if the research is validated, the immediate use of the cells in question would be to generate egg cells for research use, like testing the effects of drugs. So according to the article, they are going to use generated human eggs for drug testing. Use in fertility treatments would be far off, because cells grown in a laboratory often develop abnormalities a problem that would need correction before any egg could be accepted for fertilization. So why are we killing the young, putting to sleep the old, and then creating new artificial life? This all seems a tad bit counterproductive, unless of course there's a hidden agenda in all of this, that you and me are not seeing. We have the freedom to refer our grandparents to be euthanized. We have the freedom to kill our own child, but yet we don't have the freedom to speak freely in our own home. What freedom are we even fighting for? It seems in the 20th century, killing has become the biggest liberty of all. Many are fighting for the freedom to kill and to be killed, but who is left to fight for the freedom to live? Thank you.